Boy, hello everybody, how are we? My name is Unicorn Pondu. Welcome back to another video. And I do want to apologize in advance, but like the true crime portion of this video slash like, you know, the um, important parts of this live stream is going to have to be edited because, um, yeah, for some reason, my recording software decided to record it, but not record it in the way that that would save. And I've been trying now for a good 15 minutes to try to get it back. And there's no saving it. I'm very sorry. Every time I try to open it, it just comes up with an error. I've tried uh, converting it. I've tried using AI tools to try to <laughs> save it. And it's just nothing saved. And truly, I don't want to have to re-listen to that again and react again to that. So... So with that being said, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. I've been trying, but um, with that out of the way, um, I will be um, inserting like the beginning portion of this live stream, edit it down, and then we will be back to um, well, my current time. And I guess let's see how this goes. I'm feeling very good. I'm feeling well. I'm, I'm on the mend. Am I ever going to see your hijab again? Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm eventually, you know, like I'm on the mend. Oh, somebody asked me about... Um, it's kind of health related, but whatever. I already talked about it. My injection, um, somebody asked if it had red liquid in it and it does. So I guess it's like because the vit B12 vitamin is like a red liquid for injection. So I went today to do that and I had like no pain hardly like at all. Like it's weird. I don't know. I'm so, 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 so happy. Like you have no idea. <laughs> Don't hide from us anymore. <laughs> I'm still streaming from my room. And that is particularly why I'm off camera. It's comfortable for me. I can still, I can sit longer. Like I was able to do my cameos um, sitting down in the living room, which I haven't been able to do. So now, uh, but but I can't still can't sit for too, too, too long. Of course, laying is more comfortable right now. Hubby is in another room while I stream. You know, you don't want like... Just to avoid a, like um, noises and distraction and stuff like that from someone else. I can't wait to do all the things. Me too. I want to do all the things for real. I le Dude, I legit screamed so loud watching that game. <laughs> Brittany, isn't it creepy? It's so creepy. Yeah, no, I don't. I try not to lay around all day. You had sciatica surgery, really? Yeah, you know, I find, yeah, getting up and walking around a bit, stretch, doing certain leg movements helps. I don't know, but right now I want to, um, I want to talk about a case that is, like, I recently, like, discovered this case and it's so freaking bizarre and weird. And I just thought that you guys maybe, I don't know if you'd be entertained by it or not, but... Yeah, that's sad. That's so sad. I can't, I can't, I hate watching cases where like, um, young children are like a, a involved. I can't, ugh, it makes me so sick. Like the Chris Watts case made me the sickest. I, I, I can't understand family annihilators. Like it's just so beyond any kind of comprehension for me that, you know. Okay. So today I'm going to be covering a, it's a Canadian case um, it happened back in 1992. So let me just um, get my notes up. <laughs> so I was actually going to do like a true crime and cook cooking. So I was going to put like a cooking segment and just kind of talk over it with this case. So I made like a script just to like kind of keep my facts straight here. But um, OK, so this case happened in um, it's the case of. Uh, a small town doctor called doctor and he has I'm sorry forgive me but he has the funniest last name I ever I don't know like <laughs> wait till I say it I can't say it normal I have to say it in some kind of way like his name is Dr. Um, Schneeberger so I have to say Dr. Schneeberger <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it's just a funny name <laughs> Who the heck is this? 
<laughs> Hello, my name is Dr. Snee, but... <gasps> Yep, um, so temper- this happened in a small farming town in rural Saskatchewan called Kipling. Um, so, very small town. Um, there we go. <laughs> I have a few pictures. <laughs> Look, this me. So, on uh, Halloween night, so it's, it's a town basically that has very few people, mostly farming, like I said. Um, <laughs> Rosemary. It also, uh, you know, doesn't have very many people. It doesn't have very much crime either. So, uh, a case like this is very, you know, shocking and everyone would talk about it and, you know, small town charm and all that. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone's business kind of thing. So on Halloween night in 1992, a 23-year-old woman named Candace Foley uh, had a bad argument with her boyfriend. Um, she was working at, oh, hold on a second. She was working at a local gas station and she had a really bad argument with her boyfriend. So she fled to like to get away from him, I guess. I, what I don't know is like if her shift was over, if she just left, I don't know. But apparently, you know, it was a pretty bad argument. So she fled to the Kipling um, Memorial Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so she fled to this the Kipling Memorial Union Hospital. Apparently she had a friend who worked there. Um, so she was probably going there to try and, you know, confide in her and, and calm, calm down with her friend. But her friend wasn't there at the time. So um, a nurse noticed how distraught um, Candace was so she su- suggested um, she see a doctor before leaving to just be checked out and make sure everything's okay because she was under a lot of distress. Candy was seen by this doctor, um, Dr. Schneeberger. <laughs> Let's look at Dr. Schneeberger. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, but he's a loser. Okay. <laughs> So she was checked out by Dr. Schneeberger um, and she was actually a patient of Dr. Schneeberger. So this Dr. Schneeberger, he was a, you know, a very well-respected doctor in his community. Um, Everyone liked him, you know, it's a very small town. So he probably had a lot of patients and probably saw half of the town, if not all of the town at some point. So um, he actually um, delivered her baby. So yeah, he delivered uh, Candace's baby for her. So she was very familiar with um, Dr. Schneeberger and she trusted him, right? I mean, like everyone in the small town, uh, he had a good reputation. So she trusted him. He had a reputation of being a very good doctor. Um, So, but uh, Dr. Schneeberger said he was going to give Candace a sedative to calm her down. So she was, you know, expecting tablets or something but was surprised when he injected her with something instead. Um, Something that she described as worked almost immediately and made her whole body go numb. Um, She started panicking when she couldn't move her muscles anymore. All she could do basically was just fall over and utter a few groans. She could not scream for help or feel anything that was being done to her. All she could feel, she described like, you know, um, when you're, when they said, Basically, let's say you're getting a C-section and they they freeze you. You can feel tugging, but you can't really tell what's going on. So that's how she described it. She knew something was being done to her, but she just didn't know exactly what. So basically, now Candace is a very wise young woman. So after the ordeal, she had the mind, despite her assault and condition, to place her underwear in an airtight plastic bag she found in the doctor's office when she was finally able to move again. Uh, She had the mind to know that this could be used possibly for DNA evidence in the future. So yeah, she stayed the night at the hospital because she was too dizzy to leave and they really wanted her to stay. So the next day she actually confronted Dr. Schneeberger. Schneeberger. (laughs) And asked what she was given, what was given to her. And he replied You know, she was like, like, what did you give me? You know, and he replied in a super cocky, taunting manner. Um, He said, 
Why did it give you wild? Why did it give you wild dreams? <laughs> so she basically that just made her, you know, her heart sank because she knew by his answer then that he was already thinking of excuses and ways out of what he did, you know, um, because it, it, it was later revealed that she was injected. Um, where is it? It gets crazy. So he injected her with something called Versed. That's the name brand for a drug, midazolam, which is used as a pre-anesthetic. And it can actually it can actually cause um, it causes like, you know, you can't move. It paralyzes you basically, but it also can cause hallucinations. So, you know, he's already coming up with that excuse that, you know, why, whatever, did whatever I give you, give you hallucinations, you know, because he realizes that she's remembers what happened to her. So he's probably trying to get out of it already. So Candace told her parents what happened and they believed her. Uh, of course, no one else in the town seemed to because it was such a small town and like I said, everyone respected Dr. Schneebingy. Uh, they thought that Candace was just trying to get money from him or that she wanted the doctor to herself and basically just wanted to break up their marriage or something like that because she really had a thing for um, Dr. Schneeberger. Uh, though no offense, um, I can't see it. <laughs> you know? Um, so because it's a small town and she didn't want her reputation, she didn't really want people to be talking about the situation because they didn't believe her anyway. So again, she did something smart. She drove two hours to Regina, a bigger, a much bigger city in Saskatchewan, uh, to get tested where no one basic, no one would know her there. So sure enough, a schmexual assault test kit would reveal that there was male residue for lack of better term on her underwear and jeans. You know what male residue is, right guys? They went to the doctor for, you know, to see if he would submit some DNA testing to compare with the schmexual assault kit. And he was so confident that he was innocent that he volunteered a DNA blood test uh, when he was con confronted with the evidence. So now to everyone's, especially Candy's, hi everybody who joined, I'll, I'll say hey to you guys in a minute. <laughs> Um, now to his, you know, to Candace's surprise and complete disappointment, the DNA, um, from the blood test that was, uh, that the doctor took did not match the, um, test, the smexual, I have to be careful, smexual assault test kit from her jeans and underwear. And she was like, what? You know, like she knew in her gut that he did do this to her and she was just like, imagine finding out that the DNA did not match. What kind of case would you have if the DNA came up negative? DNA is a huge, huge, um, you know, it, it can make or break a case basically. You know, she was surprised, but she didn't believe it. So seven more years would pass until Dr. Schmeebigy agreed to a second DNA test. Again, um, what do I, I'm, I'm really bad at it. <laughs> where is it where is it all right here he is getting a blood test so seven more years would pass until dr schmieberger agreed to a second dna test um again blood was drawn from the doctor's arm but this time it was done with the police watching uh the doctor always what's weird is he always insisted that the blood be drawn from his left arm like always his left arm, I guess, presumably because that's where he claims his good vein is. Like I do that when I get blood tests too. Like I'm always like, I know exactly which vein they're going to get blood from, you know? So <laughs> he could probably use that excuse. But uh, again, second time, his DNA would be negative. So again, Candace was shocked and extremely disappointed by these results. Um, at this point, the police were ready to close the case. I mean, he passed two DNA tests. Usually one is enough to convince most of one's innocence. So, I mean, DNA evidence, like I said, is considered very strong evidence after all. And he was, you know, two negative tests. But again, it did not sit right with Candace or her family. Um, again, Dr. Schneeby blamed the Versed the the midazolam for Candace having hallucinations about what happened um, because it can produce hallucinations um, but 
Um, to Candace's defense, you know, experts would say, sure, the Versed can produce hallucinations, but it cannot produce DNA evidence. It cannot produce male residue on underwear and, and jeans. So that had to have come from someone, right? So Candace was determined not to give up, rightfully so. Very, very strong, wise woman. Um, because it's not easy to, to keep your composure and keep fighting for yourself when you have a whole town against you, not believing you. Even the police are ready to close the case in your face, you know? <laughs> um, she didn't want it happening to anyone else. You know, she, she even said, like, one day it's going to be someone's child or, you know, it's going to be someone else. And I need to I need this to break this case. So she hired a private investigator and that investigator broke into the doctor's um, car and there was a chapstick there. They took the chapstick and they had it tested for DNA using the epithelial cells found on the lip balm tube. Now, the cells found on the chapstick matched the DNA from the DNA uh, kit found on Candace's underwear and jeans. So the chapstick matched. Uh, so she immediately re relief for her because it proved she was right all along. Her intuition was, was right and she was not crazy. So then the question is, why is the DNA different on the chapstick from the doctor's blood test, right? But there was a problem with this. Like there's no proof that the chapstick belonged to Dr. Schneeberger. And the evidence also could not be used in court anyway because of how it was obtained. Basically, the private investigator breaking into the doctor's car, right? So that's not a legal activity. Um, so Candace, um, this goes on for years. Candace uh, tries another route by trying to sue Dr. Schneeberger in court. And uh, so the doctor was asked to take a third DNA test for this case. And this time, a nurse wanted blood from his finger instead of his arm try a different route you know both of the arm ones were negative in the past so let's try your finger but the doctor refused saying he had a disease yeah you have a disease it's called loser disease that made him easily bruise and uh since his test was voluntary the nurse tried to draw blood from the uh, left arm again because it was a voluntary test and he didn't have to do it at all. So he insisted on the left arm again. But this time she had a very hard time pulling any blood at all. So after a couple of attempts, finally some blood was drawn. But the nurse noticed something bizarre about the blood. The blood did not appear fresh and the sample actually was too degraded to get a DNA result. So at this point, you know, Candace was like, oh, come on, this is this is just ridiculous at this point. Many more years would go by until there was actually a break in the case, but it, it actually came at a very unfortunate cost, however. So Dr. Um, Sneebe, uh, his stepdaughter, revealed that, you know, the doctor had been schmectually assaulting her also and would sneak into her room at night on several occasions and also injected her with something, but she didn't know what. Um, so yeah, this guy was married. So his wife went through his office and found condoms, tons of medications. She even found Versed. So she reported this to the police who brought him in. And this time, this time, fourth time's a charm. They took DNA from his hair, saliva, and blood from his finger. Um, so the DNA, this DNA test, because it didn't come from his arm, was a match for both um, his stepdaughter's case and Candace's schmectual assault kit findings on her jeans and her underwear. So why didn't the first three blood tests reveal a DNA match? Well, on the stand, Dr. Schneemigi would reveal that he had surgically, this is crazy to me, he had surgically, oh, hold on, I got to get this picture. He had surgically... He's so crazy. He surgically inserted a plastic tube filled with the blood of one of his patients. At one point, you can even see the tube protruding from his arm. Check this out right here. But he's like hiding where the surgical incision is there, right where his hand is. Um, no idea how they missed that. But anyway, I guess they thought he had huge veins. <laughs> so he he kept that nasty tube in all those years, right from 1992, this is 1996 here. Um, so that's why the third blood test was full of old blood. So he said he did this to protect himself. So even with being caught, 
he didn't just, you know, fess up. He still maintained his innocence, claiming he did this out of desperation to protect himself from the accusations, um, you know, but no one believed him at this point. You know, no one believed him. So all in all, um, you know, good news for Candace because she finally gets some justice. Now, he was charged with schmectual assault, drugging his victims and obstructing justice. He was sentenced. This is going to piss you off. It did me to a mere six years and is a free man today. Ew. Too lenient of a sentence, in my opinion, for being a serial schmectual assaulter. So... Yeah, so that's the case. <laughs> Isn't that creepy? Hi, guys, who did I miss? Um, Applebee's. Why drive across town if you can walk across the hallway? What? Um, Disney. Hi, everybody. Pam Shakala, Rudy. Hi, Pam. Talia. Sigmoon. That's pretty normal in Canada. She sh should have been at least 25 years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly creepy. Like, you know, um, by the way, Creepy Comfort and Crime, also a channel, go sub up. They do a lot of really good um, Canadian crime because most of the cases you hear, you don't hear too many of them from Canada. You have some major cases like, you know, uh, Paul Bernardo and all that, but definitely. Um, and what's that one guy's name? Luca Magnata. Ugh. But yeah, he sh this schneeby loser should have got 25. I mean, people, I've seen people get much, like, get life sentences for graping someone. So why on earth is this guy getting away with that? Uh, he's he's a free man today, you know? You could unalive someone in Canada and be out in less than 10 years. Yeah. Oh, he's got to be old. I think I saw a picture of him being old and gray somewhere. You can probably Google it, but... Yeah, I wonder how many women he did that to, right? But at least he was caught. But uh, that's so weird. Like, I'd never heard of a case like this where somebody surgically... He, he's such an idiot. He kept the same tube in his arm for all those years so that there was old blood. That's disgusting. How do you live comfortably with an old tube in your arm? What a weirdo. Ugh. Um, but yeah... There is a movie on it, Laura? No way. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's the, the link for her their channel. Hi, Melly. Melly, I wanted to say thank you so much because I realized after my stream that you not only gifted memberships, but you gifted Loyalty Beezer memberships, which is crazy. So thank you so much for that. I didn't watch Get Down with Sean and Morley. <laughs> Do you want me to? I keep forgetting. Ugh. You have to email me and remind me, Applebee's. And send me some funny pictures. The fact that doctors are those people deemed trustworthy and some abuse their trust. Oh yeah, you see a lot of people in power really abuse their trust. You just subbed. Yes, thank you, Brittany. I find listening to people talk about um, true crime, it's really, you know, relaxing. Candace wasn't married, Brittany. She had a boyfriend. Um, and they were fighting pretty bad at the, you know, before this all happened. So she had a boyfriend. She wasn't married. She was only 23. Canada has some wild cases. Our justice system is way too fair to the worst criminals. Yeah, I know. But some places I think, isn't Switzerland one or Sweden? I mean, it's like living in a, an apartment. They feed you well. They give you Swedish meatballs. Oh, you know. I wonder how long you would know who would have been in jail if you hadn't dropped the charges. Honestly, Chin E. Pondu, it's hard to say, but I mean, that's in the past. But look at what's nothing's happening to him now for what, what else he did, right? So could have caused so many infections. Ew. <sighs> I know even, um, look at that Nancy lady who was in Gary and Filters chat laughing at a patient that was hurting. Oh, really, Brittany? Wow. Crazy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll take that photo down. <laughs> no problem. It is it is gross. If you're squeamish, Sam or Ham, yeah. 
Pop will be Meth Goblin. Oh my gosh, that's a new name. I love it. Well, some some reactors get scared off, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's it's like they can't handle like anything, any spotlight being on them. You know, I think people like go into reacting expecting that the spotlight will just be on their subject all the time. But then it's like it's no, it, it can turn on you at any moment. And, you, you know, like a lot of them can't handle that. Luca Magnata case traumatized me. Yeah, especially since he advertised it on the line and then, you know, did like a snuff thing. He's uh, it's he's so narcissistic. It's just disgusting. And what really traumatized me is, you know, what he did with those poor, poor cats. Like, um, if you guys seen on Netflix, like, don't F with cats, basically. He's just a horrible, horrid person. And he's not even rotting in a... He's in, like, not even a, a high-security prison. He's, you know, he. I think he got married, and he's he has these rights that, you know, he probably shouldn't have. You don't deserve a good life if you ruin other people's lives or if you take a life. That's my opinion. Even with cold cases now, they're finding people from DNA now after like 30 years. Yeah, that's the thing. I guess, you know, back when there was no DNA, um, they have a system like called CODIS, I guess, that they can put old case DNA in and maybe that, you know, if there was an offender, they can match it in, in the future. Now, the thing is, is that person gets away for 30 years, gets to live life for 30 years, and then only gets in prison when they're about to croak anyway. You know, that's... <sighs> To me, that's not really justice, but I guess if you're really desperate and, you know, I, I guess, it, you know, it's it's something is better than nothing, I guess, you know. Some people don't deserve rehabilitation, Meep. Yeah. And, you know, some people, there's no rehabilitating. There's just none. And even the most crazy psychopaths will admit that. Like Jeffrey Dahmer was like, you know, it's a good thing I'm locked up because I would probably keep doing it. Like, you know, <laughs> so... I cannot watch. I know, Brittany, I can't either. I can't when an animal is being hurt. No, I don't like watching true stories about people being hurt either. Um, if it's fiction, it's a bit different, but real life, I don't like it. I've heard about those native girls that go missing in Canada and they've usually killed or raped. Yeah, yeah. There's a big problem with um, Aboriginal women too. Crimes against Aboriginal women. Doctor, you mean Dr. Schneemi? This was your first try doing this. People are going to narc on you for it. But like this, you'll only get better. You don't suck. You didn't suck. Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like just like it didn't take me long to tell you about the case. I mean, I didn't. It's not really. I just wanted to share it with you. If I find something interesting, I don't plan on doing it like all the time. I don't even know if I'm going to make it a regular thing. But if I find something interesting I want to talk about. Yeah, for sure. You know. People can uh, narc on me all they want. They do for every little thing. And it doesn't matter because at least I'm, you know, trying to do something other than just gossiping about other people um, every day, you know? So, well, yeah, eye for an eye, yeah. Canada's very lenient. I mean, we don't have the death penalty in any uh, part of the country at all. Oh, I've seen some jails that are so bad, like... Um, Especially in South America, there's some that are like just, you know, you have about 50 men all in the same room. Imagine what that's like. No. Where did I giggle through the whole thing? Just saying Dr. Schneeberger's name? Do you want me to play sad violin music, Sheena? Would that help? People always come before animals. <laughs> Both are horrific, but human beings take priority, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's just, it's so heartbreaking seeing any, like anybody in real life endure any kind of like abuse or you know him and and john gacy are just like suburban nightmares like people you would never suspect to be that deranged you know i like stepping away from food too i like chantal's personality and it's not always about what she ate or is eating <laughs> yeah i like what i like about mukbangs if i'm being honest a lot of people think i do it for feeder content i don't do any of it for any feeders most people who watch it a lot of people who watch it like you know like just eating dinner alone like to watch people eat i mean you know i i like watching people eat i don't know um some things sometimes the noises are annoying it depends but i know i didn't google through it i didn't like people are acting like i said like you know giggling at the parts where i'm talking about what happened to them 
the name is funny. Yeah, I'll giggle at that all day. <laughs> I know, Amanda. There's always has to be some, but take animal over hu horrible. Yeah, animal over a horrible human being. Yes. Reviewing celebrity fashion. That would be interesting. That's a good idea, Samoan. Yeah. I don't have the best fashion sense, but uh, whatever. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> branching out to new things i really enjoyed you telling the case and giving the stream a topic thank you lady yeah i'm, I'm over drama like seriously especially gore world drama if there's any other kind of big drama you want me to talk about sure but i don't think that i want to i don't want to touch on you know maybe it, we could make a gore world in the sims <laughs> that might be fun but i do respect them though like I said, like, I don't talk any more casually than most people who talk retell these stories. A lot of these weirdos <laughs> have mother issues. You ever notice that? Like Norman Bates mother issues. People do crime murder podcasts while well, they do their makeup, but reactors won't say anything about that, will they? Yeah. And look at Stephanie Sue. She eats like hordes of food while talking about a case like. It's all if you're hated or not, and I'd be really, I just don't even care. Have you ever thought of creating really healthy weight loss mukbangs? Alrighty, welcome back, guys. And yeah, this is going to be my reaction to like the final portion of the live stream. So yay. <laughs> Let's see what Chantal has to say today. I'm actually really excited. I definitely, um, I'm thinking, do I want to bring Ramadan content? I want to go to the Grand Mosque. I haven't been there yet. And I want to read 30 pages of the Quran per day because I could finish the whole Quran in the month of Ramadan if I read like 30 pages a day. So let's say every after prayer session, you read a few pages and just make sure that it's 30 a day. And it's it's easy to, do, to divide it up that day. But reading the Quran is one of my goals. Ramadan is the holy month in Islam. We um, It's a month to appreciate. Um, you know, everything you have, do kindness, study the Quran, pray, uh, fasting for religious reasons. People get screwed up a lot from their crazy parents and their childhood is abusive or needs not met. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I can't really go wink, wink, nudge, nudge enough. I will often turn on a mukbang when I'm eating alone or the food they have looks really good. Yes. If you have something tedious and just listening, that's the thing. It gives me something to do while I'm talking as well. And everyone loves food, whether you have a food addiction, whether you have problems with food, whether you have an, an eating disorder. We can all agree that food is not something that we can just ignore in life. You need it for I mean, you can enjoy food, don't get me wrong, but in excess and um, just using it to cope is definitely not ideal. And if you have any sort of issues with it, please go uh, seek professional help. Life, even if I could fast for a year, after that year, I need to eat. So it's something that I have to repair my relationship with food. And, you know, I want to try to do that by not, I'm usually, a big part of my eating disorder is extremes. It's either binging or restricting. And when I try to do the in the middle, I feel weird. I feel like I'm doing something bad. Like Which is why you go to medical professionals to try to help you stay in that middle ground without going to either extreme. But again, it's just going to be going on deaf ears. So I will just press play. Like, oh my gosh, I can't eat butter. I can't eat cheese. I can't eat this. I can't eat that. And you know, maybe not in excess, but I have to like relearn how to make proper meals. And when I was doing a solid week of what, you know, the diabetic doctor said, just like three meals a day and a snack, I felt really good. I would make a good breakfast. I would have a mid morning snack. And my, you know, I, I just really liked that. And I want to get back to that, you know, but so safe to say that she's not on track with her eating, which is not super surprising, but I thought that we weren't going to be, you know, talking about personal matters and your weight gain and like your personal issues and behind the scenes stuff and your personal life anymore. But yet here, here we are. Great. So I want to be, I want to do videos where I'm cooking things for myself and sharing that with you guys. No matter what I eat, it gets scrutinized. People, you know, don't, may, might not realize what I'm doing. Everyone has an opinion on what you should eat and what's healthy and what's not. And let's face it, nowadays what's really popular is things like the carnivore diet, the keto diet. 
Um, but when you have an eating disorder, restricting is very hard, you know? Chris Watt's story is just bizarre. He had to guts to leave his family. Like, I don't get, that's what I don't get, Talia. Like, just what, you can't leave your fan. like, just leave, the, leave them their lives, you know? Oh, weigh out the oil. Yeah, I'm using a tablespoon. But it doesn't matter, because they'll be like, she's using six tablespoons. <laughs> Okay, if that's the case, then don't share that on the internet. You're welcome. Find something else to talk about or do or show or say or something. I mean, you choose to post your food stuff on the internet. No one does that for you. I don't have a mala to help me recite the prayers. No, I don't actually. Like the prayer beads, eh? Oh, I think I seen like a picture. It came up my, like in the suggested. Um, I always see the suggestions sometimes, sometimes of like... Um, because if I'm because I, I tag myself in my videos, right? So if, you know, YouTube is saying, well, if you're interested in foodie beauty, you're also interested in this. I saw like uh, a picture of me as a as a child or like a young teenager. I don't know where the I'm assuming like the Mr. Snowflake uh, intro that he posted not too long ago. They're going to go with that. But uh, whatever. I mean, somewhere in my past. No, Rhonda. What is that? Oh, yes. Their father. Yeah. The honor killing. Yep. Hi, Diamond Form. That is sad. That's not, yeah, that's, um, that's a weird, that's a cultural thing. That's not an, an Islam thing. He put out a preview for what looks like a new series about you. It's a couple minutes long. It's all about you. Wow. Cool. I think, like, if I look, think positively, I guess, you know, like that saying that, like, you know, I guess people are interested in my life to some degree to be able to do that. Now, I have a blocking list that's very big. And for some reason in the studio, YouTube only shows maybe 400 at a time. So I'm not able to find all of you guys that are blocked and want to be unblocked. So if you want to be unblocked, Make sure that you, if you want to send me a link to your channel um, in an email or on TikTok or something, I can try to do it that way. But I saw your name on there and I was like, oh, yeah, I don't I don't see the reason to keep you blocked anymore. I can't eat in silence without watching anything. Me too, Talia. I hate that. So I, I plan what I'm going to watch before I eat because I hate having my food and then I can't find something to watch. I'm kind of like that, but like at the same time, I usually watch YouTube videos. I'm a desk eater. I can't help it <laughs> to the point to where I have to have um, like a cup with a lid. Otherwise, water slash soda is going everywhere. And the amount of times that my keyboard, my like 10 year old keyboard <laughs> has died in big quotation marks. It, <laughs> every single time it happens, I'm like, oh, God, it's the end. But then but no, after like, I don't know, like a day and a half of drying out upside down on, on the couch, <laughs> she's just like, oh, I'm back. <laughs> you thought you can get rid of me. I'm like, well, uh, you've been lasting this long. Why not? I'm not exactly sure what Razer makes their Black Widow keyboards out of, but let me tell you what, it is very resilient so far. Um, Cunty Queen, I did do the true crime series part, and now I'm just kind of hanging out with you guys. I think I'll do that for, like, streams, you know, just, like, where basically sometimes, like, um, for part of the stream, I'll talk sometimes about, like, whatever, just hang out with you guys and talk, like, answer your questions and stuff. And then either do some gaming or whatever I have planned. I mean, if you're going to be doing gaming, girl, can you at least, number one, make sure you know, like, how to play the game you're playing? Number two, at least do the tutorial. Even if it's on camera, sure, fine. I don't see any problem with that. Number three, just make sure that the audio works. <laughs> just that entire recap I did last night was just, like, like, 80% of it's just like, why is this not working? Why, why can't you guys hear? Why can't I hear now? What do I do? What, what, what button do I press? I don't know what I'm doing. That was awful. I saved you guys a lot of time. You're welcome. <laughs> Most people get religion mixed with culture. Each country has their own way of doing things. Some are more liberal, some aren't. Exactly, Talia, yeah. For sure. I think it's because... You know, in a lot of Middle East countries, culture, a lot of them are Islamic law, right? So they mix it with the culture. But a lot of the things that happen are not in the Quran. They're not religion. You know, they just, a lot of people it's interpret it a certain way. Same thing with the Bible, you know? So I haven't really talked about my health. I mean, uh, other than, like, you guys already know about my, you know, my back thing. So I'm just saying, like, people who are asking me about it, like, I'm feeling a lot better. She already did the true crime part. Yes. That was it. Yeah. Maybe I rushed through it too much. I don't know. <laughs> Which I'm not saying is a bad thing because I was livid. I still am, to be fair. I am disgusted by how many times she was giggling. And also, I'm not saying that you can't have a little giggle at, like, Dr. What was his name? Dr. Schmeeberger's name or whatever it was. Like, that's a kind of a funny name. Come on. But at the same time, like, laughing at it pretty much every single time that you would mention it. Or just laughing in general multiple times throughout telling the story. It was unsavory as nicely as I can put that, to be honest with you. Is it lonely to eat without us now? Actually, no, because now I eat every meal with my husband. 
<laughs> before like i would be talking to the camera eating where's your man where's your man to eat food with where's your man to be in the other room while you film huh hmm where's he at <laughs> trying to make this as you know as fun as possible because that first part was really a damper on the whole entire thing if i'm being quite honest with you yeah i kind of miss you know the kitchen chairs i might maybe i can try the gaming chair like it's more comfortable and big <laughs> but um sitting down for a long time was too uncomfortable but you know my sciatica is it's like every day um you know knock on wood <laughs> it's it's better and better and i think maybe the vitamin injections are really helping um, yeah, Kanti Queen, eventually, I will show myself. Soda water tastes like, tastes like electricity, Talia. <laughs> I love it. I still think that she's talking about the fact that it has carbonation in it and there's no flavoring. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I see where she's going with it, but, like, girl, just say that it's fizzy and bubbly. Come on. My favorite parts of your vlogs is when you're out and about and show the scenery. The buildings and parks seem so much more maintained and pretty than Detroit. I was surprised. One of the biggest things I was surprised about is how... I mean, there are, like, some streets in some, I don't want to say slummier, but slummier parts of Kuwait that uh, are not very picturesque. But a lot of it is very nice. Yeah, you're right. It's A lot of it's very nice. So there's a lot of parks. I, there's a lot of things I haven't explored, and I want to get back out there. Were you comfy when you sat on the floor and used couch for back support and flow table? Um, yeah, not... Yes, as long as I have that big pillow to lean on. But no, I'm more comfortable, I think, eating on a table, I think. Because, you know, a lot of people, like, cross their legs when they're eating, and I can't comfortably, so... Definitely, because you guys remember back in Thailand, the cat cafe, how she was sitting on the floor there. So imagine that, but at home. Yeah. Mr. Snowflake made a teaser about you. It doesn't look favorable. That's okay. I don't care. Favorite street food? Show us the Indian food. It's so good. I love falafel and shawarma. I love the shawarma places. I remember when you first got to Kuwait, you had asked for suggestions about moisturizers. Did you ever find a good one? Yeah, I've been using um, Lush. I eventually got some Lush. But right now I'm using the Marcel moisturizer I got from Canada. I'm going to finish it. It's not bad. I like Marcel brand because it's hypoallergenic. It doesn't irritate my skin. Thanks for removing that. So yeah, the next best option is Lush. Like the people that make a bunch of bunch of smelly, like perfumey situation type deal products. So <laughs> hypoallergenic to Lush. Which I also shouldn't be laughing because I also um, do kind of have sensitive skin, but I also lean towards Bath and Body Works for my stuff. Loved the mall content too. It's fascinating to me to see all the different styles in stores. Yes. You're people watcher? <laughs> you know what? I haven't been to Avenues yet. That's going to be a big challenge for me, a big walking challenge, because it's got four phases. It's each phase is a different theme, sweaty. You would really love it, but it's so big. You can get, you can drive around, like you can rent or have somebody drive you around one of those cart things. I don't want to do that. I want to make it like a challenge for walking. So as soon as I'm better, I'm going to go re-injure myself. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Kuwait has some good skincare. Yeah, they have a lot of luxury stores and, um, you know, they have a Sephora. They have all kinds of things, but they all let Kaya back. Like there's nothing sickening about her. Make it make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's b been revealed. Everybody in that community has, um, some kind of skeleton which you just happen to be the star of remember hmm you know but i don't think people care right because they all go to these channels to they're interested in my life they're not interested personally in anyone in, in the person uh doing the streaming to that extent you know what i mean so maybe that's why i don't know are there any tourist temples cultural architecture that you can show us yeah i want to go to like different there, i want to go to the grand mosque um i think there's some like there's no temples or anything that I know of, but not like in Thailand. Hi, Simply Ravishing. Boy, the big Buddha temple was amazing. Like it was so peaceful. And I mean, we don't worship Buddha or we don't like believe in that, but we still respect the other religions and cultures. And it was really awesome. Um, that place was gorgeous. I, I honestly want to go there one day. And to learn about that. It was so cool. I would really love to go to like Thailand again or Malaysia or somewhere like that. When are you going to go back to showing your face? Inshallah soon. <laughs> Mistress, my screaming. Yeah, I can't help it when I'm being chased by a weird ghost. Which I did like some like math conversions on Google, it's all be fair. And um, if my calculations are correct, which they might not be to be fair, but I'm pretty sure that they are. Um, she started streaming around 4 a.m. So she was screaming at the top of her lungs at 4 o'clock and or maybe about like 4.45, we'll say. Wonderful. We were talking about health anymore. Did I talk about my health? Where? Uh, Japan. I would like to go. I'm not sure. I have many places in mind. Um, places, you know, I don't oh know. God. Okay, hate to sound like a wee, but like I definitely want to go to Japan <laughs> for all the Sailor Moon and Cutie Honey and Magical Girl stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Not super surprising. <laughs> uh, Japan is one of them. I'm not afraid of going as a fat person at all, 100%. Please do. 
please do. <laughs> Shut up, please do. <laughs> oh, that will be the day and I will be here for it. Um, I'm not afraid of getting stares from people. Um, maybe it's because I like attention. I don't know. I like sushi. I don't, I don't really like sushi that's not cooked. Like, I don't like sashimi. I mean, to be fair, I've never tried, like, traditional slash, like, raw sushi before, but I love me a good California roll. <laughs> I'm one of those white people, okay? Let me live my best life with my frozen California roll that I get from all these for, like, six bucks. <laughs> we can all live happily ever after. <laughs> it's really good, though. Oh, I need, I should have probably gotten some today. Dang it. Amy. But in a place like Japan, where it's probably really fresh and, like, authentic, maybe I would. I do like fish. Yeah, fishing. Japan is great. Japan or Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia. There's the whole Middle East. <laughs> well, the ones I can go to. I'd like to go to maybe Iran, the Gulf countries, um, Morocco, Egypt. I don't know. I, w I just want to travel. All right, and that is it. I want to apologize again for the beginning of this live stream being corrupted, but there's nothing I can do about it. And I cannot say sorry enough because I feel awful. But to keep my sanity and to keep this as, you know, as short as I possibly can, I'm just going to edit that down and then um, add in this recorded section at the end. But with that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hopefully without any sort of issues when it comes to recording. <laughs> Bye.